Hi and thank you for watching Seal book reviews. Today I'm going to do a hopefully shorter um, series review on Bloodline series written by Rochelle Mead. Now I've changed up how I do series reviews so I don't go into as much detail and they don't take as long. We'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think. Bloodline series written by Rochelle Mead. So this series I have the paperbacks the EPUBs and the audiobooks. Listening to these this time around, and it's also the first time I've read through them, I read them via audiobook. Okay, so the genre for this series is young adult, fantasy, romance, paranormal. It has vampires and magic in it as well. How does the book compare with other books in the genre and how does it match up to your expectations of that genre? So I went into this series immediately after finish, after I finished the Vampire Academy series as an adult and I loved it. It was just as good, if not more so, than the original series. This is an amazing young adult fantasy series that ticks all the boxes and grows as you progress throughout it. After falling in love with the original series, I was really looking forward to reading this sequel series. I was a bit unsure about the choice of main characters, as Sydney Sage got on my nerves in the original series. It soon became apparent that that is the point. This series works to address the rift between the alchemists and the vampires. First up we have the first book, Bloodlines. Sydney Sage is an alchemist, a secret agent that works to keep the vampire world hidden from the humans. Although they work in close quarters for the vampires, that does not mean that they like them. Believing that they are unnatural abominations that must be controlled and hidden for the safety of the rest of the world. When Sydney is torn from her bed in the middle of the night, she thinks that she is still being punished for helping the de ham de fire Rose Hathaway escape from the royal court's jails. But what unfolds is much worse. The newly discovered younger sister of Moroi Queen, Lissa Dragomir, is in mortal danger. As the only person keeping her sister in power, Jill must be sent into hiding to avoid a civil war. Sydney is appointed as Jill's guardian and protector, posing as a big sister and roommate at a human boarding school in the middle of sunny Palm Springs. She must keep Jill safe until it is once again safe to return to court. Then we go into book two, The Golden Lily. Sydney will like noth nothing more than to go to college. Instead, she is in hiding with a Morai princess a guardian damfire and a spoilt Moroi Moro royal tongue twister. Formerly in disgrace, Sydney is now praised for her unwavering loyalty and obedience to the alchemist. However, she finds herself questioning her age-old alchemist beliefs, her family commitments and her growing feelings for the vampires she is charged to protect. Her world soon becomes even more complicated as she discovers that her blood may have special properties that can prevent her from becoming Strigoi, the evil undead vampires, and that her newly discovered magical abilities may have something to do with it. Equally daunting is a new romance with the cute, smart coffee shop worker, Graydon, who seems to be a match in every way. Although he may seem perfect, Sydney can't help but find herself drawn to someone else, someone she is forbidden to be with. Book three, The Indigo Spell. In the aftermath of a forbidden moment that shocks Sydney to her core, she finds herself struggling to draw the line between her alchemist beliefs and what she feels in her heart. While battling her base desires, Sydney and the gang must work to track down Marcus Finch, a former alchemist who escaped against all odds and is now permanently on the run. Marcus is determined to teach Sydney the secrets he claims the alchemists are hiding from them all. But as he pushes her to see the lies coming to light, Sydney finds that breaking free from her deeply ingrained teachings is harder than she thought. Not only that, but there seems to be a deeply rooted magic within her, one that she must draw upon in order to survive the powerful witch targeting young women for their magic, or else she might be next. That's the halfway point when this book finishes. Then we go to book four, The Fiery Heart. In the previous book, Sydney was torn between the alchemist's way of life and what her heart is, was telling her to do. In a breathtaking moment, Sydney makes a decision that shocked even her, but her struggles aren't over. As she works to navigate the outcome from her life-changing decisions, Sydney, must, Sydney once again finds herself getting pulled in too many directions. 
The younger sister Zoe has arrived in Palm Springs to keep to help keep an eye on the vampires in hiding. However, one slip up and all the hard work performed by Sydney to get out from under the alchemist's thumb will come undone. Working with Marcus has changed the way Sydney perceives the alchemist. She must tread carefully as she harnesses her magic to help free those wishing to escape the mind-altering control of the alchemist. Along with he keeping her growing feelings for the Moroi Adrian hidden from those around them. So this is when it really becomes apparent um, that her and Adrian have feelings for one another. And it was like, oh, yes, finally. <laughs> it's a bit more front and center the romance compared to uh, the Vampire Academy series, which I enjoyed. Book five, Silver Shadows. In the aftermath of a disastrous night that ripped the world apart, Sydney and Adrian now struggle to withstand the fallout as they work to find their way back to one another. But first, they must survive. For Sydney, trapped in a personal hell and constantly surrounded by adversaries, life becomes a daily struggle. She must hold on to her identity and the memories of those she loves while pretending to be brainwashed back into the light. Meanwhile, Adrian clings to the hope that Sydney is still out there holding out for him to save her, but his inner battles prove to be almost too hard to control as his emotions get the better of him. So this book, the first half of it was hard to get through because it was very angst filled and it had to be it's how the story progressed it was just definitely helped us listening to the audiobook <laughs> and then lastly last but not least we have book six out of the six called the ruby circle once their secret romance has been exposed to the world sydney and adrian find themselves not only dodging the ever-present alchemist groups hunting them down but dealing with the constant underhanded remarks from the moroi it is not only seen as unsavory but frowned upon for a moroi to be with a vampire, let alone a human for that human to have had ties with the alchemist is unforgivable to some in the vampire world when someone they both love is discovered as missing and in danger, both Sydney and Adrian risk everything to find the deadly foe guilty of the heinous crime. Meanwhile, Adrian uncovers a shocking secret that could hold the key to understanding spirit for the entire Moroi world. So, the recommendation. This is an amazing series that not only addresses life battles, but physical battles as well. It has magic, vampires, witches, and true love that withstands everything that is forced in its way. Although it is targeted at young adults, this series can be enjoyed by all ages and genres. And genders. <laughs> it has rereadability from the amount of detail present. You can discover something new with each new read. And my review, I gave this series five out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a fantastic read. Definitely go back and reread it again. This is an amazing series that shows that love, trust and hard work can conquer all that life may throw at you. It shows that no matter what, the centre will hold. Go and read the series to know what that means. <laughs> Thank you for watching my series review on the Bloodline series. Go and read the series if you haven't already and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Bye.